We know the creation of our universe and life itself is a mystery. It's wonderful, but it's still a mystery. To explain it, we have two choices. How did it can come to be? One is random chance and natural selection, and the other is an intentional creator oversaw the entirety of both the creation and life itself. The question becomes, what does modern science actually explain, and what can modern science not explain? So what we're going to be looking for are finding the fingerprints of God, our Creator, in the origin of the universe and of life itself. Today we're going to analyze seven essential creation events, absolutely essential events that had to happen to have life and to have our Earth. In order to decide whether it's more probable that these occurred by random chance and natural selection, or were they more likely to have been created by a creator, or what we call our God creator. If the latter, then we need to recognize God's fingerprints within the world around us right now. It turns out that the basic tenet of our Christian kerygma, the basic elements of Christianity, states in the Bible, in the beginning God said, let there be light. Then, to paraphrase, God created our universe, our world, which is earth, and all the plants and all the creatures, it all came into being, and it was good because it was created out of love. It's important to know that our Creator, our God, is actively involved in our world and our lives in order to give our life purpose and meaning. To find the Creator, we have to look for God's fingerprints in our world and uh, how we came to be. And we do that by looking at the points where science can no, lo no longer explain how reality came to be. So science can reveal everything about nature, how it works, and we can begin to understand the world we live in, in our universe. The Creator's role is to start our physical space, start time, create all the laws of physics. This is all in His mind. And of course, God is transcendent. He exists outside of our physical world. So, where do we look? We look at what we call God's creative events. And these are the points where reality first comes into existence. So at this point, the thought comes into existence, and then it changes with time, and that's what science examines, and it's all done in our physical world, and this is the transphysical world. There are actually seven major creative events that we want to discuss. We'll go through each of these along the way, but we, we're going to point out that in addition to the major seven, there are many mystery alerts. We call these, these are creative events. They all appear to be miracles in themselves, but they don't rise to the level of the seven major creative events. Now there are at least six steps we're going to talk about in the creation of our universe. This is what needs to have happened. We need to start with the power of God to make something out of nothing. He has to have the idea to do it and the intention to do it. And he supplies the power. So it takes tremendous energy. All this had to be available to initiate the origin of our universe, which begins with what's called singularity, the single point where it came into existence. And after that single point, it has to have a tremendous power to expand the universe, and it's still expanding to this day. We begin with the Big Bang, which essentially is everything from nothing. Say, weren't we told that the universe and our world has existed forever? It's just infinite? Well, what do we know? We know that the universe began with a little spot called singularity. It came from nothing. And nothing means there's nothing there. There's no time, there's no physical space, there's no matter, and there's no evidence of any remnants from any other physical universes. Because all expanding universes leave behind electromagnetic radiation. And none of it is there except for our own universe. The first step, the first creation event, is therefore making the first universe. Began as a little spot called singularity, but very quickly expanded. So this is going to get very large, and it uh, remains a mystery as how and why it continues to expand. That's another creative event. Nevertheless, it began with expanding space. Time started, and because time started, then all the complex laws of physics could come into play. There's massive amounts of energy, and all of it combined is all fine-tuned to work correctly. This creates an immense amount of coordination. Even the slightest imperfection in any of the physics laws 
or constants would mean that the whole process would fail. So it's an example of incredible intelligent design. Now here's another mystery within the Big Bang. So after the Big Bang started, we showed all the electromagnetic energy coming out. But it starts as a little dot, a little spot. And that's called singularity because it's a single point. But very rapidly, just like a balloon, this blows up to make our entire universe. And our universe is still getting bigger and bigger and bigger all the time. It's been getting bigger for 13.8 billion years. It's really huge now, but that the universe has a border at some point. It's just hard to ever get there. To get the, it's going out so fast, it's hard to get there at the end. But they know it's expanding. And the scientists know because it's expanding that it mathematically has to have a beginning. So the universe is not an infant time. It's not been here forever. So now within that are all these other little the, the matter. These would be all the stars that are collected inside the space. So you have to understand that the space was created and then the stuff within the space was created. Both of them are absolute miracles. Here's a mystery alert. Who created the speed of light and the speed of expansion, which you call the precessional velocity? The speed of light is very fast. It's trillions of kilometers per hour. The s expansion speed is 80,000 kilometers per hour per million light years. So that's called Hubble's constant. So the universe is expanding. It did so from the very first point of singularity, and it keeps on going. It takes all the matter with it, and we'll talk about that as we go along. Why it does it is unknown. Science says it's called dark energy that expands that universe, but no one knows what that is. So as long as we don't know, and probably never will, I believe this is another fingerprint of, from our creator. It's just another miracle of creation. Now we're going to examine next the electromagnetic energy that was created to power the universe. And we're going to look at all the combined physical forces, physical laws, and physical constants that had to be created at the same time. And these hold physical space together. Now here's a list of many of the physical laws and the physical principles, all of which had to be present at the moment the universe was created, and space was created, and energy was created. And you can see these numbers are huge, and all of them had to be present. There's 50 more of these, and they all had to be, these long numbers had to all be present exactly at these numbers. They can't be a little bit off or the whole process would stop. So what is the probability that this all happened by random choice? Well, it's non-existent. So it's pretty much unreasonable to assume they just randomly appeared. The only reasonable conclusion is that they were created, which is only possible, being they were created, is that there was a creator with infinite wisdom. You mentioned the word electromagnetic radiation. I don't know what you're talking about. Ah, but that's not true. Because electromagnetic energy, we said, is where the Big Bang happened, the first Big Bang happened. And it's one of the physical forces of our universe. They're also related to, another one is gravity, gravitational force, and those forces that hold all the atoms together. So everything is glued together by this, this force. It's a nuclear force. But what's electromagnetic energy? That's the question. Well, how many people have a cell phone? Well, those radio waves go bouncing off your satellite and come back to you when you turn it on and, and make a phone call. You go outside and you see light, or in the, when you turn on a lamp, that's the light rays. You go have your lunch and you turn on a microwave. You go get, you hurt your hand, you go get an x-ray from the doctor. All of these are evidence, this is all electromagnetic radiation. They just go at different speed and some have higher energy and some have lower energy. But they're all made up of these waves which is really amazing. Electromagnetic energy, it, it has all this energy, can do all these things, and yet it, does, it weighs nothing. There's, no, there's nothing to it. It's just a wave and it can go right through walls. It can do all sorts of things. So it's truly a miracle. It's a mystery alert if there ever was one. Now we know the primary physical forces. We've already talked about the electromagnetic energy and the strong and weak nuclear forces that hold atoms together. And these are virtual miracles in themselves, and now we're going to talk about gravitation. What we know is science knows all about how these forces work, all three of them, but they don't know wh why they work the way they do. 
Uh, we don't know what gravitation is. We know it exists, but we don't know where it, how it works, why it works, and we don't know where it comes from. But these appear to be creation events. So you know, you know their logical explanation. Now gravity is what holds us on the ground. If you fall off a bicycle, you're going to end up on the concrete. If you you also have to know that gravity pulls the stardust together to make all the stars and all the galaxies. They're all held in place by gravity. Gravity pulls all those elements together and makes a substance. Some of it's gas and some of it's solid. But gravity also holds us in the right relation to the sun and the moon in the right relationship to our earth. That's all by gravity. We have to know that all these physical forces, all three of them, they came into being for the very first time at the Big Bang and just the Big Bang goes and then bang, there are all the forces. The three forces are in operation. So are all the physical constants and all the chemical constants. And all of that happens at the first in the Big Bang because now you have time. And notice all of these require time. It's how fast it goes per second, how strong it is between atoms how strong the gravitational force is. Is it a real strong force or a weak force? But all that came into being at the first time, so that's a clear creative event. Now, in the next section, we're going to be looking at how basic matter came into existence. As we know, we only started as electromagnetic energy, but now we have to make matter, and we're going to talk about that. Now, here's another mystery of creation. Remember, we talked about electromagnetic radiation in the Big Bang. It came shooting out. But there was no substance to it. There was no stuff. But lo and behold, here's another mystery alert. These high-energy waves, just light waves, they crash together. So they don't weigh anything. But when they crash together, they make a lot of energy. And they're able to create these little particles. Particles have names, funny names, like neutrons protons, electrons, and they all, because of those nuclear forces we talked about, come together very quickly. So when you have just one, one, and one, you end up with the three of them coming together, making a little atom. When there's just two of them, it makes hydrogen, but they don't like to live alone, and pretty soon they add some other parts to make helium. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But what holds these, these, these are nuclear forces that hold these particles. You can see they're attractive. Here's a positive force and a negative, just like a battery. And they are a magnet. You like, you know about magnets. You bring one next to each other. It has a positive and negative end. Poof, they just come right together. So these are the same forces, nuclear forces. And they hold everything together. Very important, but certainly is a creation event that just can't be explained. So you might ask the question, why do the hydrogen atoms fuse to become hydrogen and helium gases? The hydrogens combine together to make helium. Why do they do that? Well, it turns out hydrogen molecules by themselves are very unhappy when they're alone. They're unstable. So two atoms join together to make hydrogen gas, just like that. Bing, bing. They come together and they make hydrogen gas. Or, almost preferentially, they grab a couple of neutrons, join together, and that makes helium. But what this does, this is called nuclear fusion. When that happens, there's tremendous energy created. Again, it looks just like the Big Bang. It's electromagnetic energy with creating heat and light. This is going to be very important. And all these, because the universe is expanding, they get blasted out into space. So hydrogen and helium are created first, and out they go into this brand new universe. Well, we start with singularity. We made hydrogen. It made hydrogen gas or fused into helium to make tremendous heat and light. And the whole works explodes out into the expanding universe. As you get out in the universe, gravity pulls all the helium and hydrogen together, and they coalesce to make giant stars. These are the giant first-generation stars made up of just hydrogen and helium. It's hard to imagine. You look up in the sky, and most of the, the really bright objects are first generation stars and they're all gas. There's nothing solid about them at all. And the one when they make galaxies, ours is called the Milky Way. And our little planet will be in here someplace along with our sun. So nuclear fusion provides all of the heat and light for us to see all of these stars in the sky. Coalescence of gases. At this point, 
you might have some questions. The biggest is, is there any evidence that the original energy made at the time of the Big Bang is still left around to really help us know how old the Earth is and did it really have a beginning? How can you prove it? I can't see anything. I can't hear anything. Sometimes you wonder if we're just making all this Big Bang stuff up. Is there? Can you show me some physical proof that the origin of the universe happened? And can we know how old the universe really is? The answer is yes. In the 1950s, scientists were looking at the sky uh, with a radio telescope, and they discovered that there was interference, sort of a constant hum. And they looked at every part of the universe where they were, and then they moved around the world and looked at the universe, and they ended up seeing that no matter where they looked, there was this background noise, and they called it the cosmic microwave background radiation. So it's a slow-moving wave with relatively low energy, but it's everywhere. And they reason that this is the consequence of the Big Bang. This is the radiation left over from the initial explosion. Remember singularity and the explosion of electromagnetic radi radiation. After all this time, this is what we still see. And because of that, they could calculate that the Earth had a beginning, the universe had a beginning, at 13.8 billion years ago. Now, I won't go into a great deal of detail of how they discovered how old the universe was. But I can use an analogy that's helpful. If you listen to a siren, if you're standing on the corner and listen to a siren, it starts way in directions, four blocks to the left. It's going to go by you and go four blocks to the right on a fire truck. If you were on the fire truck, the siren would always be the same strength. But when you're standing still and it's going to pass by you, you start from the very beginning where it's very low. Now, if you're standing still and you calculate how fast it is from where you're standing to how fast it goes away, and we shift that to light instead of sound, what happens is the light shifts towards the red zone. And so they can calculate how far the sound is away from us. But if we're standing still and it's, it's inverse coming towards us with the same kind of change, you can just calculate, back calculate, when it started. So if we know how long it took this way or how much redshift and you go the other way, that's how you come up with the 13.8 billion years. Additionally, scientists, and this is important, have proved mathematically that a physical expanding universe like ours with a Hubble constant greater than one must have a beginning. This is called the BVG theorem. So the universe, our universe, is a physical system that has a uh, distinct time. It has a start. It's not an infinite amount of time, as is often thought. So this is an, another interesting fe uh, feature of the physical space of our universe. It is not empty. So when we look at just the space, we call this empty space, it's actually filled with all kinds of things, gases, matter, and even where there's nothing, what appears to be nothing, they can measure electromagnetic energy. It's called as zero-point energy. So there's something, even where there's what looks like a vacuum, there's still electromagnetic energy present. So everywhere in our universe has something in it. All that's important because it proves that our physical system is unique and it's not left over from any other multi-universe or a bouncing universe. Hey, I know, if I go to a birthday party, somebody had to put it together. Isn't the Big Bang just the birthday party for the universe? It must be because... Physics has no answer for where the initial energy came from. It started with immense energy, Im immense electromagnetic power, and it began in just one spot. Physics, or science, has no re explanation for where the physical constants and the physical forces, how they were created or how they came to be. It just happened at an instant with the Big Bang. Who dreamed up electromagnetic radiation? And especially, who defined the speed of light? This isn't just random. It's very intentional. Physics has no answer for the formation of the elemental particles that make up the you know, protons, neutrons, and electrons, and how they make atoms. Science has no explanation for powering the expansion of the universe. They call it dark energy, but they don't know what that is, nor where it exists or where it came from. 
And the other thing is science cannot disprove the BVG theorem that says when you have an expanding physical universe, it has to have a beginning. So it, the universe is not infinite in time. The real answer is the birthday party creator put it all together. He had all the essentials to have a universe at all. We call that creator our God. We're not going to focus on what f modern astrophysics has shown to be true, especially now that we have recent telescopes in, in the last 10 years. We know a great deal more than we've known in the past. The universe has a beginning. It has a big bang. It started with the Big Bang. It has not existed forever. The universe is not sitting still, but is expanding. How it expands, we don't know, and where the energy comes, we don't know. But it expands as a sphere. It goes out like a, a balloon being blown up. It's not being twisted outside the, the universe to form a different kind of field that would suggest a bouncing universe where you have a big bang, then a big crunch, and it goes back and forth. All expanding universes, including ours, have a Hubble expansion ratio greater than one, have to have a beginning that's mathematically proven called the BVG theorem. Ours is an expanding universe, therefore it has to have a beginning. We know that it is at 13.8 billion years ago. Our, physical, our universe is a physical system. It rose from a singular point called singularity, single point, singularity, and it came out of nothing. That's always hard to understand. I, I can't even conceive of nothing to not have space or energy or time even. With singularity began with tremendous energy as electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation is just inconceivable in itself. It is clearly a creative event. And collision of these high particles, high energy particles, which have no weight, turned out to create particles that stuff that has weight. We know those protons, neutrons, and electrons, and they make the various elements. We'll talk about that in the second talk. Our universe has left a trail of cosmic microwave background radiation. It's only of one type. If there's some other universe and we're a blip off that or a bubble off it, there would be more than one type of cosmic microwave background radiation, but there isn't. Finally, an infinite universe. If you had an infinite universe, and people say the, inf the universe exists forever, that can't be true because an infinite universe would violate the laws of entropy. And what are the laws of entropy? The laws of entropy say that a physical system, an expanding physical system like ours, will depend on having energy. If the energy burns up, just like if you have a cell phone and the battery goes dead, the cell phone does not work. And so an infinite universe is impossible because with an infinite amount of time, all energy would have been lost and the universe couldn't exist. We couldn't exist to even look back and consider the point. Now as an overview, I want to make a couple of points. Christian theological principles do not discount nor contradict any science. It's just that science hasn't yet caught up to our Creator's plan for the universe, our plan or our life as we know it. So it's entirely reasonable and highly probable that there must be a creative reality outside of our physical reality that has the ability to bring us and our universe into being out of nothing, that creative force we call God. It seems entirely unreasonable and improbable that our universe was created by random chemical physical events alone. Now the takeaway, main takeaway, when we consider how the universe originated from nothing, you can't escape the necessity of God as a creator. Once you start looking at the world around us, you will keep finding God's fingerprints everywhere. The next step, the fingerprints of God in the formation of the universe itself.